Hey, I'm Bill Gagne from Speed River Contracting, and in this episode of the SRC Toolbox Podcast, we're going to be talking to Nick Heshawn from Champion Mortgage here in Guelph. Now, this episode has been a long time in the making, not because I haven't been able to talk to Nick, but because life has gotten in the way of me editing and posting this. So really sorry to Nick for getting his hopes up and having him on the show and not getting it out fast enough. In the show, Nick and I talk about the different types of financing available to homeowners and home buyers. We talk about when you should talk to a mortgage broker or financing professional in your process. And we go down a little rabbit hole, a little sidetrack in the renovation or trades labor market because Nick used to be a former tool and die maker. And without further ado, let's talk to Nick. So Nick, I want to thank you for doing this, first of all. Yeah, of course. Yeah, happy to be here. Happy to to help out. Yeah, looking forward to the the interview. One of the big reasons I wanted to do it is as a contractor, I know about executing renovations. I have no idea how they get paid for, and it's really not my place to ask people how they pay for their renovations. And given that in the next year or so, I'm probably going to renovate my house, I probably should educate myself on the different parts of the process. And I know you and I spoke yesterday about the different options, right? Whether you own your house already or you're about to buy it, there are options. Do you think you could just start off and talk real slow for me because I'm not that smart about what the options are? Yeah, for sure. But I mean, first things first, Bill, any any individual that's looking to refinance, to do some renovations, they they need to understand what they can qualify for. I think that's the biggest step is, is, is before... You start planning, you know, the dream kitchen or, you know, the the addition off the back of the house or whatever it is that you're looking to do. You need to know, okay, how much money can I actually get for a mortgage and then go from there with respect to budgeting, you know, the project. So that's, that's the first step, in my opinion, for sure. Where does that bring you into the equation? Because they'll you often come to us and say, hey, I want to renovate. It becomes an awkward situation when we say, What's your budget? Yes, yeah. Because it becomes a little bit tenuous in the sense, why are they asking what my budget is? Are they then just going to price it at the top of our budget? Whereas from our side, we're going, we know how much this costs. Are you in the right ballpark for us to proceed? Because we want to make sure that we are not going through the motions and then we get to the point where we hand them the quote and they experience sticker shock and, and disappear, basically. Yeah, for sure. I, I think the good question for anyone in your profession would be, have you looked into your financing options? And perhaps at that point, you know, if they say, well, geez, you know, we haven't really even gone into that. We haven't talked to our bank or our mortgage provider or broker, or whatever, whoever they choose to use for their mortgage financing needs. That's step one, right? I think that would help anyone in your industry say, okay, well, you might want to understand what you can qualify for first, how much money that you can, you know, that you guys can take on in, in mortgage debt. And then we can go from there, right? I think that's it's certainly the first step. It's just, it's no different than going and purchasing your first first home or you're looking to buy, you know, buy and sell. You need to understand, okay, how much money can I, how much debt can I take on? So perhaps that would be the, the first question that of anyone in your, in your field would be, okay, what's, uh, what, what, you know, how much money do you have available to you? And as someone who is about to undertake this process, I would then go to the bank and say, hey, I'm looking to renovate. What are my steps to find out how much money I can get? What are they looking at or what are you looking at as a lender to figure out how much I can borrow and what's the process of documentation, et cetera, that I need to provide? Basically, any mortgage provider, and we hope that uh, they're going to come to us here at the Champion Mortgage. But uh, anyways, it's a uh, it's a process where we have to look at the individual's income scenario. We have to check their credit to see what their current liabilities look like, what their credit score looks like, and then understand how much money they're going to need for the renovation. Obviously, most people are already going to have a mortgage in place as well, so we got to factor in. Okay, that's what the mortgage they already have. We got to pay that out and then add more money to the to the new mortgage to get these renovations complete. So it's you know getting your letters of employment, uh, pay stubs, uh, T fours. You know if you're kind of a regular you know worker employee kind of thing. If you're if you're a self employed individual, we've got to look at T one generals, um, notices of assessment, so your tax documents. 
We also need to see your current mortgage statements, current property tax statements as well. So that just helps us underwrite the file and give you a concrete uh, understanding and number as to what you're actually going to qualify for. Are there other options than adding to my mortgage? I'm, this is a personal question, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So like, I, I know with the mortgage, I'm going to be paying that over the life of my mortgage. And I'm wondering, is there another way for me to go about borrowing the money and paying it back sooner and not paying as much interest? Yeah. So, I mean, typically doing a full refinance is going to be your cheap, at least right now with rates being so low, it's going to be your cheapest option. If you have a really great rate and you don't want to break your current mortgage, then we can look at putting on like a line of credit, like in second position, you know, in behind your first mortgage to, to maybe do it that way. If you've got a really, really super low rate, lines of credits, home equity lines of credit are fully open for repayment. So if you're in a position where, okay, we're going to have 150000 that we need, but we're able to pay it off in a year and a half or, you know, six months or two years rather than a, a five-year portion or 25 years or whatever, then maybe a line of credit is, is a better option for you. So end of the day, you still have to get all your income documentation in place. So we can look at all these different options for you. And as a brokerage, uh, we have access to every single product available in the mortgage marketplace. So uh, we just look to see what's going to make most sense for each individual's personal needs. So yeah, you don't always have to fully refinance. You can you can add a line of credit. You can have those other options for you. Oh, okay. So you said something there about five year versus 25. If I were to add it, say, to the life of my existing mortgage, then I would be paying that renovation off in the, the window of my existing five year mortgage. Is that correct? Or is it, are you always adding to the 25 or whatever it is your total? Typically, you're doing it in a five-year term, so you'd be breaking your current term of the mortgage, and then we'd be doing, a, say, a new five-year term. We can, When you do refinances, you can amortize them all the way up to 30 years to keep your, your payments as low as possible if that's what works for an individual. So yeah, you're, you're kind of resetting your, you're resetting your mortgage, right? You're, you're taking the equity that you've already you know, received out of you know, the obvious massive increases in, in uh, home values right now. We are seeing a lot more of these renovations. People are staying in their homes because it is costly to move. So people are renovating quite frequently. So yeah, there's, if there's equity there, you're basically resetting your mortgage to say a five-year term, and then we can amortize it from anywhere from say 10 years all the way up to, all the way up to 30 years. So in that sense, I'm resetting my mortgage. When I take the longer term for the lower payment, that means I'm paying more interest over time, correct? Correct. Yeah. So it, again, it's all situational for each each family or whoever's doing the, the renovation. It's all going to factor. We always factor in what their monthly cash flow is, what their next five to ten year, I guess, goals and plans are with respect to their finances. I mean, a lot of the times people will take the longer amortization, but also utilize the lender's prepayment privileges, where you can make additional lump sum payments or increase your payments by up to fifteen to twenty percent. And then that way, all those additional payments go directly to the principal amount of the mortgage. So it's, it's all situational. Basically, it's whoever comes to us, this is what their needs are. And then we tailor the loan from there, so to speak. So my scenario is not I own the house already. So I would go in and talk to you and say, I own the house. I want to get X amount of dollars. And what about the scenarios where I'm looking to purchase a house and I want to renovate when I move in? I don't have a mortgage yet. What can you do? You mentioned over the phone doing a cost, renovation cost plus. Was that what it's called? Yeah, it's called a purchase plus improvement uh, mortgage. So it, it works quite well for people that they have maybe a minimal down payment. Um, they don't have additional savings to apply towards, say, a kitchen renovation or fix up the roof, windows, that sort of thing. You can actually add in, We can typically it's up to $40,000. We have got loans approved up and above 40,000. So it's what you purchased the home for minus your down payment. And then we factor in what you figure you're gonna need to do your renovations, okay? So how it works is, is you still have to qualify on what that total amount's gonna be after the renovations are complete. So that's how that works. But certainly we have products in place where you wouldn't have to, you know, say go open a personal line of credit for $25,000 at 
five and a half, six percent. We can do it through the mortgage, through the purchase plus improvement program, where you're say paying two percent or two point one percent over five years. So it is it works really well for first time buyers for people just getting into the market that are looking at maybe all the house needs maybe is an updated kitchen and some flooring. That's a great product for, for those people. One of the things that we end up people asking us about is basement apartments. Yep. In follow up to that, you're adding a certain amount for the purchase plus improvements. How does that amount get decided upon? Do they have to come to you with a quote from a contractor or do you guys have a guide that's in place? Given what I'm experiencing right now, the massive increase in material costs, delays in supply chain, et cetera, how would you in your scenario dealing with them figure out what that amount is that you're going to add to the existing or the upcoming mortgage? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Bill. So you have to actually have contractor quotes in place and uh, also kind of a, a budget as well to submit to the lender for approval. Okay. So basically how it works is, is the, uh, they, they purchase the home. They, we close, you know, we close on the purchase. What happens is they start to do the renovations and we have to send in the finished obviously the the invoices and everything were to show that they're paid all right so they have to find another way to pay them the money is in the lawyer's trust account okay okay and then basically the funds will be released once the work has been completed they send an inspector out to confirm that say someone's doing a, a basement apartment accessory apartment they want to make sure okay this is what the client said they were looking to do this is all the work that was done yep okay perfect and then and then on they go and, and they start paying the mortgage at that, at that higher amount. And is it a draw system? So at different stages, does somebody come out, verify, okay, you've completed this phase. We're now going to release the funds. Or is it a all 100% at the end? How does it work? Yeah, 100% at the end, for sure. Like, here you go. You know, the work's been complete. All right, perfect. The funds will get released once that is done. If there's no draw process, that's more of a, of a construction mortgage. That's when we're doing a, say, a build from the ground up, and they'll do that in draws. But uh, in the Purchase Plus Improvement space, it's when the, it's when the uh, work has been completed. So then I'm wondering, as a contractor, from my side, I'm totally self-interested in this conversation as a business. Does that mean I'm not getting paid till it's all done? Typically, you're going to have to have your clients maybe come up with half the, you know, half the amount, right? Like the deposit. So they're not getting any of the money from your side until it's all done, but they probably have to have some capital mobilized for my side of the equation. We always recommend our, our clients say, like, if your contractor has any questions or concerns, have them call me and then I can explain the process and how that goes. Show them, look, at this has all been approved. All we need to do to get the funds fully released right. is just show that the work's complete. So it's kind yeah. of obviously the contractor's best interest is to do everything on time, right? Get everything done. And then obviously then the funds are released and, and away you go and everybody gets paid. Everybody's happy and, and we move on to the next one. Our system operates where we have a contract with a payment schedule. So as things get completed, we receive payment. So then it, we would just probably try to, if that were the case, somebody came to us and saying, hey, we have this cost plus improvements mortgage. We would then probably have to try to factor in that element to our budget because then we are carrying the lion's share of the cost for the renovation. You know, we're paying wages, we're paying materials all up front. We're not cash flow positive 100 grand <laughs> year round. So I, I didn't really know that that was the case, that the difference was between that a con construction loan and the cost. Yeah. Plus and again, typically, like the typically the policy is, is up to $40,000 is what the typical kind of ceiling is for most lenders that we deal with. However, again, we have got projects that are approved over and above that. I think it's more situational where somebody can show, hey, look, I have, you know, I've got room on a large line of credit or whatever that I can float this for now kind of thing and, and pay the contract. So you're asking them to have $40,000 liquid before no, you... No, that's, that's the actual like policy with the lenders is up to $40,000 over and above the purchase price. So it's not, it's not for... It's not for the client that's looking to do like a full main floor renovation that might cost them a hundred, hundred fifty thousand. It's more 
cosmetic stuff, um, you know, kitchens, roof needs repair. Like certainly it's nothing like nothing major structural. Like they, they, they're not into right. doing that stuff. It's just more, okay, it's not quite what the clients, the customer's looking for when they do the kitchen and that, that'll be, you know, how they want the house. So it's more, you know, smaller stuff, right? Yeah. So what you're saying is the cost plus home plus improvement option has a ceiling of 40,000 that you can get above and beyond from the lender, correct? Yeah, so they purchase a 250, I mean that's crazy. Let's say 450, you could go up to say Which right now 450 yeah, sounds really cheap. Too. Yeah, I know. So, let's say, you know, we'll bring it up to 490. Well, that's kind of the the limit is what they like to do. Again, we've done a couple here per, I've done a couple personally where I've gotten it approved above that 40,000. We have some colleagues in the office that have as well. We don't see it that often, but you know, they will do over and above that 40,000, but typically that's kind of the ceiling, right? So, so that's how it works. Is you have to be approved for, say, four hundred ninety thousand minus your down payment, right? And so, whatever it is in the middle there, that's what you need to qualify for. But yeah, I mean, it's typically is forty thousand is kind of the, the max that you're looking to see. So again, the new kitchen cabinets and, and countertop and some flooring would probably eat that up, right? Nowadays, uh, nowadays that that forty grand has gone real quick. I mean, the price of a two by four has gone from three forty nine, we'll say, a year ago to nearly eight dollars. We're seeing just unreal numbers. Our supplier, the local Rona, is our supplier, and they basically told us last week, like, don't quote anything with OSB because we're not going to have any for the foreseeable future, like the whole year. They had located five truckloads in northern Ontario. And some company in uh, Minnesota or Middle Middle America came in and bought their whole supply for the rest of the year. Wow! In like fifteen minutes later. Is there any is there any turnaround in that in, in sight or like I mean are we ever gonna is there been any talk in your profession? Where- I wish I had an answer for that. Uh, we have hit a point where we are regularly checking with our local suppliers on supply chain issues. And costs, we are updating costs almost weekly. Whereas before, we would update every three months. You look at the change, you know, price of a two by four might change 10 cents over three months. Maybe it bumps 25 cents. And you're going, okay, we, we ate our socks on that, but we'll, it'll be fine on the rest. Nowadays, you're, we have clauses in our contracts that will say above and beyond this change in price in materials will be passed along to the clients. Right. I've heard of other contractors that I know of having jobs canceled because the price of materials has gotten so out of control that the client can no longer afford the project, which what are you going to do? You know, it's, it's unfortunate. It sucks in a lot of ways for a lot of people because you're walking into scenarios where you're, having to qualify yourself when you're talking to people and we make an effort to have that uncomfortable money conversation earlier because of the fact material costs have gone up so much. Typically what I heard, and again, I've just from going on what I've heard in the past, 10 to 20% overage for budgets when you're doing renovations. I know I'm looking into doing one myself. Are you kind of going now, you should maybe look at 25, 30% over and above what you're budgeting for? We do fixed costs. Yeah. Contracts, we don't really allow a contingency budget. We advise them, say, look, you want to have about 15% in and around because once we open your walls, there may be something or people will make design decisions along the way. Usually it's something along the lines of the project is going so well that they start adding things to it. They're like, this is great. I want to add this. That's usually where your contingencies get caught up or something the way the house was built or a previous renovation was done is not what was expected because we can't see inside the walls until we open it. Mm -hmm. Now we aren't even, there's no way for us to give a percentage amount. Right. OSB, the sheeting I was talking about a year ago was 12 bucks a sheet. If you could get it right now, it's 50 bucks. Oh my goodness. So we just kind of put our hands in the air and say, we're, we're going to give, do the best we can to get what we can. We're, we're looking at supply chain issues. We had a shower that we ordered that took six months to get. And it was just a shower kit. 
And every two months they're going, well, it's going to be another two months. Hey, remember we told you May? Well, guess what? It's going to be July. (laughs) So there's nothing we could do about that, which really, really sucks. Doors are a big issue. If you order custom doors, interior doors, you want something nice in your house, it's going to be a while because the doors get shipped over from China in some cases. There's some that are manufactured here, but the supply chain, it's not that easy. And now factories are not operating at 100% capacity. So we deal with a custom kitchen cabinet company. Their supplier out of Quebec can't operate at 100%. So say before you were 8 to 10 weeks to get cabinets, well, now you're 12 weeks, maybe 16. So it's really hard to lock in a start date to when you don't know the cabinets are going to show up because our experience with kitchens and what I tell clients is it's going to be all great. You're going to be super pumped. The progress is going to go so quickly from a visual standpoint in the beginning. And then week three, you're going to turn to me and say, I'm really sick of doing dishes in my bathtub. Are we done yet? And I'm going to remind you, we are 10 weeks away from start date. So you're still another seven, eight weeks before you have anything that looks like a kitchen. I'm sorry. So it's, it's a rough experience beforehand. I've read things where people talk about stress-free renovations and I'm like, I don't think those exist because even if you have a great contractor who communicates, who does great work, you are ripping out part of your house and as clean as it is, it's still a construction zone and you're paying thousands and thousands of dollars to think that that experience is going to be stress-free at any point. <laughs> it might be a little naive, so I dish out a lot of hugs. Yeah, I bet. And that's, that's just what we could do. Uh, we try to do our best to educate clients up front. And that's what part of this podcast series is that I'm trying to do, is provide people with information along the way to be more educated, say, when they talk to us or when they talk to a professional like you, then now they're equipped with more information as opposed to kind of showing up in the dark, which is nobody's fault. Because what we do is not the same as buying a car. You can't go online and say, oh, a Honda Accord is this much. You need somebody to show up. It's not an easy process. We have people saying, okay, uh, I'd like a quote. We're like, great. So you'll have it tomorrow? We're like, we'll have it to you in two weeks. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah, for sure. Well, and and it just shows you that it's good to have a good group of professionals around you. Uh, with respect to contractors, obviously your financing professionals, you need people that know what they're doing and that can advise you properly because like you said, it is a very, very invasive, stressful experience for people. The end result is is always makes it worth it. I think you know most people that have renovated their homes would say that, but certainly everybody will say, yeah, you know, being cooking cooking on a hot plate down in the basement for a couple of months isn't always easy. Young kids running around, right? So, you know, that's where... Yeah, you, you want to advise them, hey, you want to renovate your kitchen, do it in the summer so you can barbecue a lot. Exactly, right? So, I mean, interesting you're talking about the uh, delays in your, in, in your business and line of work where COVID hit for us last year the same time everybody else did. There was a, there was a slowdown in, in March or April of last year. All of our, you know, the major lenders in Canada were all, well, we were all working from home, right? So there's the delays in that, but it was amazing to see that we were still able to turn around our our fundings on time, timely manner. Certainly stressful for a lot of people involved, you know, underwriters at the lenders and, you know, us as, as a brokerage. Wasn't easy, but that's our commitment to our clients. Obviously, we're in a business and working with, with individuals like yourself where there's, there's deadlines, right? So you've got to do everything you can. It is unprecedented times, but yeah. it's nice to see that at least in the financing space here in Canada, We've been able to to help a lot of a lot of Canadians do what they're looking to do, and again, with not being able to go anywhere, a lot of people have been putting pools in their backyards, putting additions on, you know, fixing up their basements, uh, whatever. It's been a lot of a lot of business come our way with our clients that are are doing these things where you know they're going to need professionals like yourself. So it is good. This is a podcast is excellent to for anybody that's looking into doing this sort of thing. Certainly, um, there's a lot of homework that needs to be done and reach out to the professionals that can help you with that. And are you seeing an increased demand because of the current scenario, not just the pandemic of being at home, but the increase in the cost of housing of people wanting to add money to their mortgage to, to, to do renovations? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people are looking now and going, well, 
you know, the current marketplace, if I move, I'm just making a lateral move, right? If people enjoy their communities they're in, they've got good neighbors, uh, they like their home, they just, there's a couple things they need to do. We're seeing a lot more people staying and renovating, you know, maybe 10 years ago, there was a lot more flipping going on, guys move, you know, here to there, you know, every couple of years. Well, when people get to the, the home that they love and, oh, okay, this is my almost forever home, it's maybe not as big, but we're seeing now, I mean, the cost of housing is crazy. So it is from a financial standpoint, again, depending on where we're at with pricing on, uh, you know, material and such and, you know, contractor availability, I still think it's probably, if you like where you are, you're probably better to renovate and stay, right? So especially with rates being as low as they are right now, yeah, we're definitely seeing a lot more of our, our clients are, are doing that. So definitely seeing you guys must be certainly busy in, in your area, I would think. Yeah, well, my two, two points on that. My wife and I joked that if we sold our house, we could afford to buy our house. Exactly. It's crazy. Where do you go, right? You know, where do you go? Where am I going to go? My mortgage is going to triple... Well, even if I buy something, so we're just like, you know, my house is small, but whatever. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. On the other side, the contractor availability, we are experiencing just a variety of circumstances coming to a head. Not just the cost of materials, but it's something that I've always been conscious of is the demand for labor and the supply of labor. We are just... We're a, I don't want to say a dying industry, but trying to hire a carpenter as a contractor is not very easy. There's companies doing radio ads. There's companies out there trying to find carpenters. You can find a plumber. You can find an electrician. You can find an HVAC tech. Trying to find a, a carpenter, somebody who's going to have a general knowledge of everything and be able to fill the gaps between the trades and do that. There isn't an educational system that brings that along. So we are, when I got into the trade 17 years ago, they were talking about a labor shortage. We're here. It's, it's here. And it, for us, it's, we, we could easily grow. The demand is huge for what we do right now and has been for a long time. We can't grow our company because we can't find more capable carpenters. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. I mean, out of high school, I was a, I did my apprenticeship and, and completed my tool and die maker uh, certificate. So working in the auto industry, basically. But I remember hearing those stories back in the, you know, the late or the late nineties when I was doing it was, yeah, there's going to be labor shortages. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of interest in, you know, in the skilled trades. However, there's lots of money to be made for, you know, if, if you're good at what you do and you want to work hard, there's, there's lots, lots yeah, of I, I kind of there, say you know? there's if you don't like building stuff, it's a hard business to be in for sure. As, mu as much as the money could be great, and you know, I'm not rich, I live humbly, I do okay, I don't want for much. At the same time, if you don't like what you're doing, if you don't like building stuff, there's a lot of stuff around the business, it's not an easy business to be in, and I have friends ask me, oh, what's it like? I said, well, at the time when I was on the tools all the time, I would say, if you are not accustomed to seeing your own blood, it might not be for you. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's just different things about it that aren't the same as working in an office or working in a, a white collar environment, you know, working outside in the winter, yeah. not the greatest. No, no, absolutely So not. you really, to me, you really have to like building stuff. You have to like that sense of accomplishment. Yeah. I liken it a lot to sports. I grew up playing basketball. And when you're playing, you kind of have this sense of freedom. You're just free. You're not thinking nothing's happening. And I liken what I was doing when I was on the tools a lot more to that feeling. Yeah. It didn't feel like work. You're just banging things out and getting things done. And you're thinking and you look around and you're like, oh. And then you realize, oh, I haven't had lunch. And it's 3.30. Yeah. Like, well, why do I have a headache? Oh, I haven't eaten anything. <laughs> so... It's great. I would never change it for the world. It's the unfortunate thing is the focus gets put on, yeah, you can do well as a career, you can make money, as opposed to trying to recruit the young people who would be good at it, who would enjoy it because of it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. So 
Yeah, definitely a, a sense of accomplishment where you can, you know, see see a project, you know, start and finish, and you can actually say, "Hey, look at I I built this right." So definitely, I got a lot of a lot of respect and, and love for the people in the trades. Um, I get being one myself back in the day. Uh, it certainly is important important piece of our society, and and it's awesome to have people that can actually do the work. I certainly tried, um, you know, putting some tile flooring in and all that, and realized, you know what, that's not for me. I I pay a professional to come do it now, and and I just I do the numbers and do financing and and stay in my lane, right? So it's important as you get older. That's that's what you do. You try it. You go, oh my goodness, you know, that's not happening again. I'm going to get in a professional. So yeah, it's uh, well now now that I'm getting older, you know. Get Getting down, it takes a little bit longer to get up. Yes. And I think just the last point I'll make on what you're talking about is we were having a conversation, my project manager, my site lead, myself, my junior guy, and really people will ask you, what's your favorite part of it? And we all, all three of us or all four of us said the same thing. And it's the end Mm -hmm. because you've seen the whole process and what it was to this new thing. And what we enjoy is sharing what we like with the people we do it for. It's very selfish from our point because we just like doing it. And then it turns out and you're just like, oh, great. And it's nice to share it with a client who enjoys the outcome. But for us, it's very fleeting because you're just on to the next or you have two or three of these going on. Then you have that moment where you just revel in what's happened. You're like, this looks great. Five minutes later, you're like, okay, let's go put out another fire. Off to the next job. Yeah. So it's, it's a great place to be and I, I couldn't picture my life without it, but it is a very challenging multi-pronged approach when you're doing a renovation because it costs money. Yes. And I did a podcast on basement apartments that will come out before this one where I did it through a friend of mine who I've done a couple for, and he talked about having a team that you work with. So when he was talking about buying a house with a basement apartment, his team consisted of a real estate agent who understood the market and understood what it meant to buy a property with investment or income in it, a mortgage broker who understood how to get the financing for it, an accountant, and he said, you're, you're building a business. You're now taking in income. You want an accountant who understands what you can and can't write off along that process, a contractor, and so he had built a team over the years that had made this easy for him. And I have had the opportunity to kind of talk to everybody and you are the kind of one of those people in that conversation that I wanted to share with people because, you know, you can't get renovations done without paying for it. I mean, I keep telling my wife that, but she doesn't really listen to me. <laughs> yes, it's uh, it's certainly like we said earlier, it's so important to have the right professionals around you. This is, uh, you know, to do a major renovation. It's a huge, you know, life event, right? That uh, families take on, and and it, it always works out in the end. But if you don't get your ducks in a row from the start and understand, okay, yeah, like you said, without money, none of this happens. You gotta you gotta get in front of a, a broker, a mortgage agent like myself to go, okay, you know, how much can we get here, and, and what are we looking to do? So that's where I always advise anyone that's looking to to take on a renovation, to, you know, upgrade their home or do whatever. It's certainly to, to speak to your financing professional and, and understand where you're at and, and how much money you can use and, and, you know, what best structure is with respect to your, you know, your goals and plans over the next five, 10 years. It's not just, we don't just, we're not a transactional company here where we're just doing a deal and moving on. Like we, we plan on, on working with our clients for as long as they need a mortgage. So it's not just about, here's the rate and this is how much money I can get you. It's, it's building the plan, the financial plan that we really focus on. So that's, uh, you know, that's where we, I think, shine. And that's where maybe where we can outperform others in our industry. We just, we try to try to take that long-term approach with everyone we deal with. As a client of Champion Mortgage, I can attest to that. But in closing, one final kind of question is there something when people come to you, is there a common question you get that they're not prepared or that they don't ask that you think is important for people to know? Is there something that in every meeting you enlighten people to that they hadn't thought about? Uh, it's just more of the future planning. I mean, we try not to plan too far ahead, but a lot of times I'll have people come to me and, and they're maybe paying out some debt. I've actually had a few of the, these this year where they're just, I mean, we need to pay out some debt, Nick. And it's like, Okay, and I always ask them, what's your five-year plan? Like, do you need to do any work on the house? 
is there anything you need to do in the house? No, 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 Nick, we're fine, we're fine. We're just going to pay out debt. I get a phone call a year later. Yeah, so we're thinking about updating our kitchen. We're thinking about putting in a, you know, a, a nice backyard, you know, oasis or whatever it is. And I'm like, you guys remember I asked you this last year, right? They're like, and most people, yes, I remember, Nick. So that, <laughs> that's the big thing because what we try to do these transactions, I know if it's not, if there's no immediate need for the money. I mean, I get it. Well, why pull out money if you don't need to use it right away? However, the big thing is, is okay, what's our five to 10 year plan? And if rates are low, you know, and like this case is right now, take the money out now. If you're going to do it in a year from now, well, it's just the opportunity cost, right? It is what it is, right? A lot of those times too, we'll put a line of credit and a mortgage product in place for people where they don't have to draw from the line of credit, but the money is there for them to use it when they need it. So that's what a lot of people come to me. They're just focused on, say, cleaning up some debt or renewing their mortgage. We always ask the question, are you looking to renovate your home over the next five years? You know, so that's that's something that we always touch on with every client in that renewal or refinance process. In another podcast I talked to, a local real estate, Gide Adalolo, who you know, who mentioned it's changes in people's lives that lead them to either move or renovate. You know, you are about to have a kid, you need a bigger house. You know, what with us with basements, what happens is more than likely it's a young family and they just need more space. And it's either for you to send the kids down there to get away from them or for you to go hide from them. One or the other (laughs) is usually it. So it's the planning part and the fear of debt I think sometimes turns people off, but I'm, I'm a person who I kind of, I'm the same when they're like, Hey, do you want extra money to borrow? I'm like, no, yeah, no, I know (laughs) because I'm, I'm wholly irresponsible. Yeah. Uh, But it's also, it's important as you grow up to kind of realize I I should probably plan for the future, especially if you have a family. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Life's fluid. I mean, we, what you just explained there, my wife and I went through this a couple months ago. We had a tenant in our basement for a number of years. We just had our second daughter. She's five months old now. And the toys were just piling up in our main floor and and upstairs where we were going crazy. So luckily our tenant, who was fantastic, she had moved on. And and that was when we're like, okay, there's nobody else coming in. And we just, you know, minor, minor renovation of our basement to basically build that into our, in our toy room for our kids. So you're always, you know, there's always changing uh, things in your life, right? That you need to always be prepared for. So we always also try to have mortgage products in place for our clients that allow you to maybe make a change midterm of the mortgage where you're not going to get handcuffed with a massive penalty. I mean, we do try to set up our clients in the right product. Again, looking forward, looking forward five to 10 years, right? I mean, it's, it's not about, okay, yeah, here's the lowest rate. Well, it could be a product where if you were to make a change and, and you know, need to make a change and break the mortgage before the five-year term is up, it might cost you twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to do that in penalties. So it's all, again, we ask all the questions that are required to make sure we're putting our clients in the best possible product possible for now and for down the road if something changes, as you said, because life always changes, right? So That's awesome. Okay, I appreciate your time, Nick. Thanks so much for doing this. Right on. Okay, thanks, Bill. Thanks to Nick for taking the time to chat with us. Once again, I've learned a lot about financing renovations that I didn't know before and is really going to help me when it comes time for me to renovate my house and hopefully the not-too-distant future. I hope you learned something from Nick about financing and all the things included. And again, I'm going to apologize to Nick for taking so long to get this up. If you did enjoy this, please give us a like and a follow on whatever platform you're interested in. If you're interested in more topics, check out our library of content on YouTube, iTunes, wherever you take in your podcast. Take care and thanks for listening.